it appears we have some propaganda and I've skimmed through this article that's appeared recently and it appears they're trying to make everybody look like they're out of their minds to think they would do any type of bad things with a heart facility. So we're going to read this through. Whenever anything unusual happens, whether it's Fukushima radiation or the polar vortex in the lower 48, someone somewhere will connect it to radio signals emanating from the high-frequency active auroral research program, HARP. The facility in Kakona, 15 miles northeast of Glen Allen. Every hurricane, typhoon, tornado, heat wave, flood, drought, and blizzard can thus be traced without any thought by conspiracy theorists to the Air Force site, not far from the talk cutoff, just east of the Richardson Highway. Nothing can stop the tsunami of harp hysteria, which complicates the matter of discussing its future. The $290 million facility is a vestige of the Senator Ted Stevens earmark era in Alaska, valued by scientists from the military and many of America's leading universities who see it as a cosmic plasma laboratory without walls, with implications not only for the military, but for basic science and communications. The interaction of solar radiation with the outer edges of the atmosphere creates the ionosphere, a region that begins about 60 miles above the Earth's surface that is central to understanding, improving, or inhibiting electronic communications, as military leaders told Stevens. The Navy wanted heart so it could learn to communicate with submarines worldwide, while the Air Force tried to discover how satellites could be protected from destruction after a high-altitude nuclear blast or polar magnetic storm. Well, I'm glad they were worried about a high-altitude nuclear blast. You think they're not nuking space, huh? You think they don't have, uh, well, I don't know if I would call them space drones or not, but they've got their little black projects and they have weaponized space. Today, the biggest change on the horizon for HARP is back down on Earth. The quiet announcement by the Air Force Research Laboratory that it wants to pull the plug. Sure they do. Major General Thomas Masiello wrote last fall that the Air Force lab intends to cease operations and sustainment at the facility located in Kakona, Alaska. Given the facility overhead cost, cost? Somebody's worried about cost with the, with the debt that we've got? You've got to be kidding me. Especially the military. You think the military's really worried about cost? Declining budget and competing priorities... AFRIL is pursuing a transfer of the facility to another entity. So let's say that again. They are pursuing a transfer of the facility to another entity that would accept ownership and operations. But then again, if the Air Force can't find someone to take it over, it'll be dismantled. Do you think that that, do you think that somebody's not going to want it? I mean, even if they were not totally lying through their teeth right here, filtering the truth out from the lie. Last summer, the facility was temporarily shut down, but Atna Facility Services took over the operations and maintenance September the 30th. But the Air Force says it can't afford the four to five million a year. You've got to be <laughs> out of your mind. They're spending billions, billions a year. Our debt's going up a trillion a year. And then, oh, they can't afford the four to five million a year it costs to run it. The most powerful ionosphere. Here you go. Here's all you global warming chatterers out there that think that man's doing it. What does it say right here? Most powerful ionospheric heater. What's that word heat mean to you? Does that mean heat the atmosphere up? Does that mean make things hotter? And when things get hotter, things 
feel hotter and ice and glaciers melt? Do you get it yet? Or will you ever get it? It is called a heater because the energy directed skyward from the 180 antenna spread over 30 acres is used to heat electrons in the ionosphere. Not in the atmosphere below. No. Who could run hard? Following the October 13th warning letter by Masiello to the Office of Naval Research, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the University of Alaska, the government began planning for a HARP summit next month in Washington, D.C. The purpose of the meeting is to decide as a government, as opposed to just the Air Force, what to do about HARP. Keep it open or close the site and remediate it. That comes from Bob McCoy, the director of the Geophysical Institute at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. One way to keep it open would be to upgrade the facilities by transferring an advanced piece of radar equipment from the Poker Flat Research Range north of Fairbanks. The move would be for at least two years, according to him. The Advanced Modular Incoherent Scatter Radar, a National Science Foundation facility in operation at Poker Flat since 2007, is used to measure the most fundamental ionospheric properties, the foundation says. It is an interconnected series of 4,096 flat panel antennas set up in a grid about one-third the size of a football field. On the elevated structure, sloped like a grandstand, it has a combined power of up to 2 megawatts. The beam is steered carefully, controlling the, electronic sig the electrical signals delivered to each of the 4,096 antenna elements. Joshua Simeter, an electrical and computer engineer professor at Boston University, writes on his website. This electronic steering capability means that data can be acquired, in essence, simultaneously from a grid of predefined directions, analog, analogous to the way an image is acquired from a digital camera. Unlike a camera, however, the radar gathers information along the path of each beam, allowing the construction of three-dimensional images of the particles in the ionosphere. The poker flat system can be dismantled and moved for 750 to a million bucks, while a new structure to hold the radar at heart would be about 200,000. And the Air Force has been sending out signals for a couple of years that wanted to get out of heart. Yeah, right. That intention was clear last May when the National Research Council held a two-day workshop in Washington on the science potential of the site. How to pay for it. How to get more researchers using it. The workshop included guests and organizers from John Hopkins, the Air Force Research Laboratory, Naval Research Laboratory, the University of Illinois, Boston University, Miami University of Ohio, the University of Michigan, Virginia Tech, University of Utah, the National Science Foundation, SRI International, MIT, Cornell, Dartmouth, and the University of Maryland. Well, that's quite an interest in it. Mm, a lot of people think people at the workshop, huh? Some participants at the workshop cited the unusual history of the heart facility as a contributor to its underscrutalization by the broader community of researchers. Stevens earmarks meant that the documentation and justification required of other facilities were not produced for the heart startup. This history and the heavy military involvement may have contributed to the perception that it was unduly difficult to do general scientific work there. And this may have prevented any researchers from learning about HARP's potential. The National Research Council document said, at various points in this workshop, participants proposed ways to make the facility more welcoming, user-friendly, better coordinated with existing programs by the National Science Foundation. Experiments with the combined facility could then come under the, uh, the usual NSF procedures, which are more open and familiar to many scientists. A radar system had been proposed for the HARP site in the early 1990s, but was never funded. Other potential uses, uh, Louis Lanzarotti, who is a physics professor with the New Jersey Institute of Technology, said there is a future for HARP beyond the Air Force, but it depends upon the research priorities of scientists who could use the facility. The workshop participants agreed that the combination of extremely high power and the capability to be rapidly reconfigured to create a variety of spatial and temporal antennae patterns is unique in the world to HARP, or more properly, 
It's an ionospheric instrument. Experiments at HARP since 2007, when the facility was finished, have resulted in observations of phenomena that multiple participants characterize as new and exciting. But the lack of a radar system hindered complete analysis and a summary of pr practical applications for HARP. Oh boy. Space debris. One potential application, still theoretical, summarized concepts for high payoff strategies for removal of space debris. ARP waves could be used to increase drag on old satellites that have become space debris. With the increased drag, their orbits will deteriorate more quickly and they will burn up on re-entry. The report says that HARP might be able to do this as it has been known to produce ion outflow. It drags oxygen atoms to an altitude of 800 miles. The creation of artificial plasma layers presents a possibility of creating long path propagation channels on demand that would otherwise be unavailable. These could be used to inhibit communications as well as enhance them, depending on the desired application. ART might provide artificial ionization clouds. Say that again. Artificial ionization clouds. That could make high frequency communications more reliable, as they're not subject to fluctuations in the ionosphere. The irregularities in the ionosphere have long been known to seriously degrade communications and navigation signals from satellites. ART could be used to emit low frequency waves into the magnetosphere high above the Earth to track the impact on trapped high-energy electrons and protons. Data from these experiments could help design systems for radiation belt remediation, which could be necessary for protecting satellites in the event of a, here we go again, high-altitude nuclear blast or a severe geomagnetic storm. Well, that's twice we heard about a high altitude nuclear blast. So, what we have here is a whole lot of smoke and mirrors. We got a little bit of truth. We seem to have more lies than truth. So the claim that they're gonna, you know, the military don't want it anymore. They're not gonna shut it down. You can make book on that. But what did they say? Basically, it would go to another entity. Yeah, it would go to another one of those entities in their black ops projects. ARP has many uses. We're not even talking about the usage to, to uh, do a form of mind control. I mean, Nick Begich, I've, I've put that video up in my favorites before. It has the ability to do certain things, maybe not control your mind, but it can make you have mood, a different mood swing, whatnot. And they can cause earthquakes, they can move the jet stream, they can move storms. They have done these things, and they want to make everybody seem like a conspiracy theorist that doesn't know what they're doing, that they're just doing good things with this facility, and that everybody else is wrong, which is crazy rock of crap. These people conduct weather wars. They have been doing it for years. And they're going to continue to do it. They're trying to cover their butt by acting like this is some type of a, a helpful utensil. And it could be. It was designed to be helpful. But once the military got it, any helpful purpose of it was thrown in the garbage and it became what it became. So there you go. This is your article. What do you think? I know what I think. They're going to keep doing it. They're just going to say, we're not doing it anymore. And that's it. So, take care everyone. I'll talk to you soon.